Hello, 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 and welcome to Facebook Live. We're here to help you improve your English. My name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com and also the podcast inglespodcast.com. And with me is Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Craig. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Lynn oh, is from you, the web. <laughs> you Where are you from? Where are you from, Lynn? I've just advertised your website and you said right. absolutely nothing. I said nothing. No, so so <laughs> I am Lynn and I am that is my website, put it like this dot com. And um and I'm an online English teacher. So if anybody's interested in online uh, classes in English to help you achieve your objectives, um then uh, go to put it like this dot com. You can find out more on the website as well about what kind of areas I teach in okay as well okay. right sorry I was a bit asleep there I'm a bit asleep it's I think I think we're both quite it's been a long day I think we need a rest a we need a bit day, of a holiday yeah. as I'm sure <laughs> some of you watching also feel the same way um today we're speaking about food and partic in particular shopping for food so mm -hmm. if you are watching the replay thank you for spending time with us and hopefully some people will be coming in soon to join us live on Facebook. And the reason for this topic today of shopping for food, well, first of all, it's nearly Christmas. And whatever you're celebrating, whatever religious holiday you might be celebrating, probably you're shopping for food and you're collecting food for the holiday period. And our local supermarket are changing everything in the store. And last week, we went into the supermarket and I know in some countries they might do these big changes at weekends or in the evening when the supermarket is closed. But here in Spain, they like to build and have tools on the floor and wires and cables <laughs> while you're shopping, which makes the shopping experience very interesting. But I started thinking they're changing every position of everything in the supermarket why it costs them a lot of money maybe there's some psycholo psychological reason to increase their sales by changing the position of some items so that's the premise that's the idea for today we're going to look at some vocabulary with you mm -hmm. and then we're going to ask some questions about why supermarkets place items in particular areas of the supermarket is anybody watching us hi Hema. Hema is here mm -hmm. lovely to see you again Hema. Hi, Hema. rodrigo hello mm -hmm. claudia is here hello claudia hello uh monica jos yos uh-huh reiner hello reiner and juan lu uh-huh um, like one Lou again, yep. And Rainer's mm -hmm. from Germany, right? From Germany, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, shopping for food. Let's go with some vocabulary connected to supermarket shopping. Mm -hmm. um, supermarket chain. Chain is cadena in in Spanish, but what does it mean? Chain in the in the in the in the sense of supermarket or other shops, Lynn. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my chain. chain. I'll show you straight away. This is a chain that I have around my neck, my necklace. And it's when you have like lots of little links and it's all linked together. And they use that metaphor for a supermarket chain. So if you have um, a company that has several supermarkets, so not just one store, but several in different locations, then that's called a supermarket chain. Now, if you're in Spain, there's some very famous supermarkets chains, I think, like um, Mercadona here in Valencia is very famous. I think that's all over Spain now. Then you have some uh, European ones, which I think are also in South America too, like Carrefour or... Um, Al Campo. Al Campo is a is an international one. I think if you're in America, they have things like Walmart, for example, which is everywhere. So supermarket chain is a group of supermarkets. They all belong to the same company. And they usually always offer the same kind of things, the same kind of products. And often they have exactly the same layout of the store because later we're going to talk about the layouts and they, they have the same layouts. Mm -hmm. So supermarket... So no, Sorry. On. Um, so supermarkets tend to be quite big, fairly big shops, 
and, mm -hmm. and hypermarkets, as Lynn said, Carol Four, are even bigger. But a corner shop tends to be much smaller, and a corner shop may be family owned. It's very unusual mm -hmm. that it's a chain of corner shops mm -hmm. owned by the same company. So a mm -hmm. corner shop would be your your neighborhood fruit shop, for example, your neighborhood grocery shop or uh, a convenience shop, which is our next item of vocabulary, where you can buy bits and pieces, little things, maybe some bread, some milk, something essential. So a corner shop is a very small local shop that's usually family owned. And I think corner shop, we use that very, very much in Britain. In the UK, we say corner shops. And I think in America, they tend to use convenience stores for that in American English. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Rafa's just said in Spanish, we use the same cadena de supermercados. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same. Tran it translates exactly, cadena chain. Mm -hmm. um, Christy is joining us from the Canary Islands. Hello, Christy. Hello, Monica. Diego is back. Hi there, Diego. And as a dean as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, Welcome to, to you if you're joining us on, on Facebook Live. A mini market is, is like a supermarket, but smaller, fewer things. And a hypermarket, as I said before, bigger than a supermarket. So examples of hypermarkets in, in Spain and other European countries, um, El Campo and Carrefour, which is a French-owned hypermarket chain. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have markets. Uh, and markets, I love markets. Markets are the traditional uh, way that people maybe many, many years ago used to buy, where basically the farmers would come and they would put up a table and they might sell their fruit or their vegetable, which was directly from the fields. And then, of course, in the in the towns, they set up a place in the town where you could have a market often the market was maybe not every day maybe it was two times a week or once a week and the people would come to sell their produce and usually markets were for food so it was for fresh food like fruit and vegetables sometimes cheeses sometimes meat uh -huh. um, but on markets you didn't normally buy um sort of um how can I say, finished goods, you know, manufactured goods. It was usually more fresh produce. But, of course, now markets uh, are all over the world. They sell a mixture of everything. And often they're a tourist attraction, I think, mm -hmm. because we have a wonderful market here in uh, Valencia. I think it's the biggest market in Europe, actually. Um I think I read market, that somewhere, yeah. the central market, and they become tourist attractions because all the tourists go there and they see all the lovely things that you can buy, such a huge range of food in markets. Do you shop in markets, Craig? I used to work in a market in London. Oh, my, wow. my dad worked for a food company, a can food company. So they sold food in cans mm -hmm. and sometimes the cans would get damaged. They get knocked or a box would fall and they couldn't sell the the cans in the supermarket but the cans were fine the food was okay inside mm -hmm. so he used to sell that on his own to make extra money on oh, sunday wow. <laughs> and it became like a family thing for about mm -hmm. two years every sunday we'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning drive in the dark to a market and sell this food in a market in, so in that market. was oh, wow. uh -huh. that was fun for a while did you shout as well because i know that in traditional english markets come and get your peas exactly come and get to... your carrots half price <laughs> on your carrots come on love come and get your carrots yeah we used to do that <laughs> <laughs> that taken me back so you, yeah. yeah there you are you were a real barrow boy that was the name of somebody who as, <laughs> as cloudy market. As Claudia said, you can buy organic food at markets. Yes, you can. That's, That's become cool. very popular. And Virginia says, I usually buy in the corner shops. We must help small businesses. There's no preposition, Virginia, with help. So it's just help small businesses. Yeah, it's important to help family-run businesses. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. And actually, I think they've done quite well because in the pandemic, in the lockdowns that we've had, a lot of people have gone back to shopping locally, I think. So I know that the shops around where I live, I think they have done actually better uh, since the, the COVID pandemic because people yes. have gone back to, to buying locally. Mm -hmm. 
That's true. Another place where you can buy some food, in particular, cold meats, cheeses, maybe cold fish like smoked salmon or herring, that kind of thing, is a delicatessen, which is a German word, I think. It's often shortened mm -hmm. to deli. Mm -hmm. And that's very popular, especially in the U.S. You go to a deli to buy um, your cheese, your meats, and the meats are usually cold, so they're called cold cuts to cut meat, cold cuts like ham or turkey or chicken breast, that kind of thing, pickles, onions, mm -hmm. and cucumbers in a delicatessen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there are specialist stores, of course. Um I suppose you put that there, Craig, referring to food, didn't you, really? Specialist stores? Yes, like a specialist mm -hmm. cheese store or oh, a specialist yeah. ham store you might get in Spain. They're, they're mm -hmm. getting to be more popular now, I think, uh -huh, because I, I've seen a lot of them. And they again, it's for the tourists. They attract a lot of tourists. So you have like the, there was often a specialist store for wine, for example, a wine shop. They were the first ones of maybe about 20, 30 years ago where you would just go to this particular place to buy wine. And then now I think I've seen uh, places that just specialize in cheese or just specialize in ham. Uh -huh. And um, it's usually they cost a lot more money. Yeah. So yes. you go there for the privilege of buying in a specialist store. But usually the variety is much greater of whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for a big variety of different ham, then you go to a specialist store. Mm -hmm. Katia is saying that in Costa Rica, they have a place called a pulperia, mm -hmm. which is interesting in a small town, which is smaller than a mini market. But pulperia, pulperia. pulperia is octopus, Katia. Do they sell like octopuses in a pulperia? Wow. Let us know. I'm not, I haven't uh -huh. heard that word before. It might be, no, 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 especially no. for Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, some of you might know that bakers is where you buy bread to mm -hmm. bake bread is a baker's and butchers for meat um, and fruit shop for fruit. And as Lynn was saying before, a wine shop, which in, in the UK is called an off license, because if I can remember, the off license used to be attached to the pub and you could buy alcohol there when the pub was closed is that why it's mm -hmm. called an off license because it's off the premises of the pub and it's I, licensed for particular uh, times of the day i think i think there was a time where you could only buy alcohol from pubs because pubs had a license to sell all alcohol right. and an off license was a shop that was specialized in selling alcohol but I mean, they also need a license to sell uh, alcohol. Yeah, but I think it means that they were not uh, they were not obliged to sell it in the uh, the opening hours of the pubs, because the pubs in Britain have very specific opening hours, like at ten mm -hmm. ten thirty it used to be or eleven o'clock. I don't know what it is now, but you couldn't buy alcohol anymore in a pub after a certain time in Britain. But then that's been changing recently. But that's a very old fashioned form of the word isn't it off license yeah. it's just stuck uh -huh. Uh -huh. because there were licensing laws mm -hmm. Raph has answered my question a pulperia is like a corner shop in Spain we say ultramarinos yeah mm -hmm. I know that word ultramarinos but pulperia uh -huh. is new is new to me mm -hmm. um, and uh, Angel is reminding us to use reusable bags which we do mm -hmm. so the environment will thank us especially because today I think the head of the United Nations is warning us against destroying the world. So that's a very timely mm -hmm. suggestion. Let's move on to look at some more vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Yes, inside the supermarket. Let's move into the supermarket. And the cashier is mm -hmm. the person who takes your money. So the worker who um, swipes your shopping with the barcode, Código de Barras, and then when the amount appears, you pay the cashier and the cashier gives you your change. Where does that happen then? So the cashier is the person and the place where that happens, where that money gets trans transacted when you give the money and you get your change, happens at the checkout. 
Now, often in a supermarket that sells food, of course, that's a place where usually it has a little conveyor belt and you can put your food on and then it comes to the cashier and then they scan it through the till and then you pack it at the other end. But we also have checkouts, for example, in department stores as well or cash desks, it's sometimes called. The till, which is uh, the next word, is actually the machine. Now, sometimes that, that the official word for that is a cash register, a cash register. But um, the normal word in Britain is the till. And that's the machine where they code in the things. They usually, I mean, they do it less and less now, actually, because everything's automatic now with the scanning. Um, but before, I, I used to work in a shop many, many years ago, and I had to remember the prices of everything. And I used to key them in one by one. <laughs> you used to work in the supermarket yeah i used to work in a supermarket and i loved working on the checkout <laughs> i worked on all counters but uh, what, what did you enjoy checkout, about it the contact with the public yeah uh -huh, yeah because you got you you met really nice people and the other thing is i love cheese and i used to work on the cheese counter cutting the cheeses and that was lovely so I, between <laughs> working on the cheese counter and working on the checkout i really enjoyed myself <laughs> okay next one yes yeah, self-service because these days they're trying to save money by not having so many employees so now you can scan your own food uh, at the self-service scanner so where the cashier would normally swipe your cheese you can swipe your cheese and then you pay by credit card. And when you pay by credit card, you often do the same movement, which is to swipe your card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when they have calculated how much money you owe them, <laughs> then they, they usually give you the total, the final total. And you have to, in order for the transaction to go through, you have your card, you've swiped it, and then you have to key in, which means press the keys, key in your pin code mm -hmm. and um, and then the bank authorizes the payment if you pay if you don't pay in cash of course if you pay by card uh-huh hmm. okay. and when, after you've paid you get a small piece of paper or sometimes in our case a very long piece of paper with all the items you have bought and that's called the receipt be careful because it's a false friend in Spanish, or at least in Peninsula Spanish. I don't know if you say this in, in Central and South America. Ticket. Ticket is not, in English, the name of the paper from a supermarket or a shop. Ticket mm. does exist in English, but we have plane tickets, we have concert tickets, we have bus tickets and train tickets, but the receipt is recibo. It's the justification that you have bought something also notice in the word there's a silent p that you do not pronounce so the correct pronunciation is receipt receipt mm -hmm. okay. and juan lu is jumping ahead juan he lu is, has uh, jumped ahead to the last word what's the last word Lin? so he, juan lu is asked how is called what what is it called the specialist lines where the products are stored is it called a corridor and it isn't it's called an aisle which is the word here on the banner aisle and i think rafa knew that and he helped juan lu thank you rafa and um the aisle is the place that you walk and then on either side of you you have of course the shelves with all of the foods that's the aisle and um, we also have an aisle if you watched our program before about air travel the aisle is also in the middle of a plane between the seats so you have a row of seats on one side a row of seats on the other and that space that passageway in the middle is called the aisle okay and um, in a church as well the bride oh, walks down too. the aisle the bride walks down the aisle that's true so between two rows of seats or in this case in the supermarket between two shelves of products uh -huh. and again notice the pronunciation with that word because another silent letter we do not pronounce the s the pronunciation of aisle is exactly the same as the contraction with i will aisle mm -hmm. exactly the same and also the same as the Isle of Man, the Isle of White, which is I-S-L-E. And it's the, the another word for island. 
Uh -huh. And they all have the same pronunciation, aisle, aisle, and aisle. Mm -hmm. I'll walk down the aisle. Mm -hmm. On the shelf is where you find the products in the supermarket. So the singular is shelf, and the plural, the F changes to a V. E S so shelves. Mm -hmm. So in a supermarket you have a shelf and many different shelves. Mm -hmm. And then we have this word positioning. Now, now it's not the concrete things of supermarkets. This is all to do with the business behind supermarkets because there's a new concept now. Well, it's not that new, called positioning, which is what Craig was talking about at the beginning of the uh, of this uh, lesson. And positioning is basically when the company decides which product is going to have which position on the shelf. And that has a huge impact because the, 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 the products that are on the shelves at the level of our eyes, right, of an adult, obviously, um, they are the products that you're going to look at first, which means they have an advantage <laughs> because you might just pick that one rather than put your head up and buy the one above or the one below. So what a lot of um, food manufacturers do to supermarkets is that they pay the supermarkets for a particular position on a shelf where they want their products positioned, in, in which order and where. OK, and that's something that we as consumers are not really aware of. But it, in business, it's a very, very important issue. And there are people um, I used to work in a consumer goods company, so I know this. But there are people whose jobs is they are position managers. And basically, that is their job to to find and sell the right position. Uh, so I them. wonder then, and we'll talk about this later, but I wonder if the sweets for children has a lower placement on a lower shelf. It does. And they're and always if, actually at the cash desks. Uh, and oh, they're always... <laughs> that's they're one always, thing I wanted to ask at the end. Yeah, yeah no, sorry, but they're always no, no, there that's, because that's, they're exactly in the eye line of the children. Uh -huh. And the children then see them a, and then they take them and the cigarettes if you think about cigarettes I, often supermarkets now are not allowed to sell cigarettes but a few years ago when they could sell cigarettes the cigarettes were always placed at the cash desks but at the height of your of the adults mm -hmm. and the, the sweets were at the bottom mm -hmm. it's a really interesting area we'll, we'll get into that a bit mm -hmm. later as well which is connected to the next expression the store layout just mm -hmm. a small point that store is more common in american english and shop is more common in british english although we do say department store some of you may have noticed that a very popular very big chain department store is closing in the uk debenhams mm. and we'd call debenhams a department store but generally speaking we'd call um a shop in the uk and a store in in the us and when we talk about store layout, it's where the products are in the sh in the store or in the shop. Mm -hmm. That drives me nuts. <laughs> drives you you know what that means? It drives me mad. It drives me crazy because we have supermarkets here in Spain. Well, as you said at the beginning, and they keep changing the layouts. And I hate food shopping. So when I go into a shop, I know exactly which direction I'm going in. And so it really annoys me <laughs> when the shops change their store layouts. Because do you it, make do you make a shopping list? Always. <laughs> and does uh, well, so does your shopping list do you make your shopping list depending in on the no, the position of the products you're going to buy in the supermarket so that you're not going backwards and forwards all the time. I kind of know it, you know. I have a big family, okay. so I go shopping a lot. So I, can't, I think I kind of know it. But probably unconsciously, subconsciously, possibly when I make my list, I actually do it in order. I don't know. I don't know. But it, I get very angry. I'm not a happy person when they change the store layout. <laughs> You're not a happy shopper. <laughs> no, I'm not a happy shopper. So please, if anybody is a manager of a supermarket, don't change the layout. <laughs> oh, it's driving me crazy. Anyway, <laughs> in the supermarket, we have different brands. And the brand is the Marca 
of different products in the supermarket. And there are some supermarkets like Mercadona, which is quite famous in here in Spain. They have their own brand, which is called Hacendado. So you can go to a, a Mercadona supermarket and you can buy the supermarket's own brand, which tends to be cheaper than other well-known brands that are available in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you want me to explain the difference between white label brand? <laughs> yeah, well, your own brand or your white label, sometimes, I mean, sometimes they're used synonymously. But officially, a white label brand is when uh, a well-known manufacturer of food, maybe not well-known, but a manufacturer of food, produces the same food for different supermarkets but they each put their own label on it, right? So it could be the same producer. The same product is actually, you can buy it in one supermarket under one name, in another supermarket under another name, and it might even be sold as a real brand, which is sold in all sorts of supermarkets, okay? And that's called white label brands, okay? And uh, then, of course, some brands are well-known, everybody knows them for example nescafe i would say is a is a well-known brand i think that exists coca-cola it exists all over the world and then you have little known brands so those are brands that are not so well known okay and there it's a bit of a mouthful that isn't it to say well known little known brand little known but, brand uh, uh, that's what we say uh-huh Jordi said that Carol Fora and Alcampo have own brands too. Yes, yeah. yes, they do. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that really annoys me very much about Mercadona here is that the Hacendado brand is most of the products available in Mercadona. Usually you can't buy another brand. You have to buy the Hacendado brand. Mm -hmm. So it's a very limited and restrictive in Mercadona and that's it's cheap but mm -hmm. one reason I don't like shopping there is that there isn't much choice you have mm -hmm. to buy their own brand in many cases mm -hmm. that's right uh-huh okay Are we moving on to uh, a household next? brand sorry oh sorry uh, go back a household brand is um is is a brand that most households know so for example you would say nescafe is a household brand most households in the world know nescafe right so a household brand is kind of synonymous with well known brand mm -hmm. okay all right, more food. <laughs> well, Lynn, Lynn mentioned the word counter before, which mm -hmm. is mostrador in Spanish. So depending on what you want to buy, you go to that particular counter. So you go to the fish counter to buy fish, the meat counter to buy meat, the cheese, bread counter. Um, bakery is the area in the supermarket where you buy your bread. And maybe start thinking already um where you buy bread in your supermarket is it near the entrance is it far from the entrance just to get you thinking of where that is in your supermarket and where's the fish counter where's the meat counter where you mm -hmm. shop mm -hmm. okay and then also in the supermarkets so you've got these counters that's usually where there is uh, an assistant who will you, you tell the assistant how much of whatever it is you want, cheese, meat, fish, they will prepare it for you, put it in a bag and then give it to you and then you take it to the cash desk. But of course, there's a lot of food now in supermarkets that's already pre-packed or pre-packaged. And that food is usually waiting, um, especially if it's fresh food, then it will be in fridges, coolers and freezers. So fridges... Um, things like yogurt, butter, um, cheese would be in fridges. And in the coolers and freezers, you're going to have things that have to be frozen. So things like ice cream, um, frozen fish, frozen vegetables. Okay. So frozen goods. You've got the word there on there, frozen goods. And then that's where they are. And then the canned goods are on the 
Does anybody know where the canned goods are? They sit on the, we've had that word already, but I'm just testing to see if anybody knows and can remember. Estante. Come on. Where are the canned goods? While you're thinking about that, Rafa's <laughs> said that you have to check the equivalences of the Athendado brands because you can buy the same product but cheaper. Yeah, maybe in some cases, Rafa, but then um, I don't know. I, I like to see three or four different different brands, different prices, different quality of products so that I can choose. I don't like to be forced to buy the brand of mm -hmm. a, a particular place in, in a supermarket. Uh, especially so it's uh, a personal thing yeah yeah and also Andrea said I wonder if an own brand could be referred about products from origin I think what you mean is uh, could we use the word own brand if the product is is originally from a, a place we don't tend to say that because a brand is like a marketing term. So mm -hmm. it's when you create a name that you want your product to be associated with. So, for example, Nescafe is a brand name and it's got coffee, it's got drinks, it's got um, yeah, all different types of coffees. And they all belong under the name Nescafe. But Nescafe is an invented word. It's, it doesn't refer to coffee, right? I mean, they've, they've kind of like invented it from cafe and Ness. I don't know where the Ness comes from, but they've they've invented the word. So if you have a, a real product from the place of origin, you wouldn't call it a brand unless you're giving it another name. Okay? Like, co like cognac, for example, must be uh -huh. from the area of France, cognac, where they make the cognac. If mm -hmm. not, it's not real cognac. Uh -huh. But so cognac is not a brand name. Cognac, a brand name. cognac is the product name. Uh -huh. It's also interesting to compare in English the two words brand and make because in mm -hmm. Spanish both are marca, but mm -hmm. there's a difference in, in English. The make, for example, the make Ferrari, Ferrari makes cars and Ferrari is a make, but the brand Ferrari goes a lot further. It's more the image of the company what do you think of when you think of ferrari maybe you think of the color red and the color yellow maybe you think of um, quality and exclusivity and really really um in fast cars so so it's everything together it's the color of the branding it's what you think of when you think of that company and what that company presents to the public is the brand and the make is just the name of the factory that produces it produces so you have this the mm. manufactures it thank you so you have mm. yeah the same word in spanish marca but in english there are two different um two different words really felipe has has answered correctly well done, well done felipe. felipe fantastic there's only one little slip though felipe we mentioned how do you spell the plural of shelf one shelf with an F, but then if you need it in the plural, you have to say V E S shelves. Uh -huh. It's a horrible word to say, but anyway, well done for catching the, the cans are on the shelves. <laughs> Good. Um, shall we move to the next one? Yep. So we've got different things in a supermarket. Beverages is a global term, an umbrella term, a group name for soft well no any drink isn't any it drinks. it could be alcoholic as well it can so be hot alcoholic. and cold as well hot beverages tea and coffee mm -hmm. hot chocolate um mm -hmm. your coca-colas your sprites your fanta your fizzy drinks your everything that you drink is a beverage mm -hmm. and wines and spirits is obvious i think the wine and the strong liqueur like whiskey, gin, vodka, Bacardi, that kind of thing. And then um, the soft drinks do not have alcohol. That's why they are soft. It's not hard liquor. It's soft like Coca-Cola or Fanta or um, things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then 
Oh, you got to do the drinks. I get to do the cleaning products. <laughs> Just, not on purpose. That's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the way it happens, Lynn. So here we go then. I'll do the cleaning products. Detergent. And I, and I, and I don't drink, so that was funny. <laughs> so detergents, so things like soap powders, washing powders, washing up liquid, okay? So detergents are things to clean with. Or sometimes that's referred to as cleaning products. So anything that you need to help you clean cleaner. Mm -hmm. And then we have another area of the supermarket, which is called household goods. Uh, now, what would you include under household goods, Craig? Things like uh, rubbish, plastic bags for your plastic rubbish. Plastic bags, uh-huh. Brushes, uh, cloths, mops, Shoe cleaning rooms. things. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. Shoe things to clean your shoes with, the brushes, uh -huh, the cloths, that's right, as you said. So anything that you need to help your household run. But obviously, it's not something that you eat or drink, okay? Mm -hmm. Special offers? Special offers are special prices on particular items. Let's say, for example, that um, some things are not selling very well and you have a lot of stock, a lot of product in in the supermarket they might reduce the price lower the price and make a special offer so mm -hmm. that very often happens for example after christmas if they have things in the shop like turon or things that normally sell for christmas they might reduce the price and set it cheap and that's mm -hmm. a special offer mm -hmm. And then I think this is the last area of goods in a supermarket. We have toiletries and we have cosmetics. Now, toiletries are usually the things that we need to keep ourselves clean. So things like shower gel, soap, toothpaste, toothbrushes. They're all things that, you, that, that the majority of us all use. They are toiletries. Uh -huh. And then we have things which are cosmetics, and cosmetics are things that are to try to make you even more beautiful than you really are. So they might be things like lipstick, or they might be uh, eyeshadow. Um, but I think that's it, really, isn't it? Cosmetics, because I think yep. shampoo and conditioner you would you would you would classify that under toiletries, wouldn't you? Not really cosmetics. Yeah. So cosmetics yeah. is literally just uh, like face creams, maybe creams for your face, creams for your body. That could be cosmetics. But otherwise, everything else is toiletries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But toiletries is also not an, an easy word to say. Toilet, which I think everybody can say. But then we say trees. I'm so like, like, uh, like, like trees in a forest. Toiletries. Toiletries. OK, because that's a, it's a it looks much more difficult than it is to, to say. Mm -hmm. I hope you're saying these words with us and repeating after us. Toiletries, aisle. Um, mm -hmm. What was the other word? Receipt. Receipt. Make sure you, uh -huh. you say those words to to pronounce them correctly. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's go to another. This is the last group of words we have before we go into the discussion part of the session. So if you tend to go to the same supermarket, and I do because very close to where I live, there is a consume supermarket, which I like very much. Well, I did like. I'll explain in a minute why I don't really like it this month. But if you go, you get a special card. Um, and if you continue to buy there, if you are a loyal, faithful customer, then you get special offers and reduction on particular item so you get a loyalty card because you are loyal fiel you're a loyal customer mm -hmm. and you get points but i mean i think these loyalty cards are very popular now because they happen in all kinds of stores not just supermarkets as well you said now, that you like shopping in aldi and what was the other one little little do they uh, have a loyalty card system uh little do uh -huh, and it's on your mobile phone uh, okay. It's not a card, but you you swipe your mobile phone as you go out, and then they give you special offers, and sometimes they give you discounts, and sometimes they give you money back as well. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. So uh, discounts, uh, we've mentioned discounts a lot. That's when the price is reduced, so 10% off, 25% off. 
for example. Uh, those are percentage discounts. But of course, there's many types of supermarket discounts. Sometimes they say two for one or three for four. Uh -huh. And that means that if you buy two shampoos instead of one, you only pay for one and you get the other one free. Uh, if it's three for four, you have to buy four shampoos, but you only pay for three. OK, and I think Carrefour loves doing that. So that's the 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 main thing in Carrefour. They're always selling three for four and two for one. And uh, you come home and your cupboards are full of stuff. <laughs> and then um, th sometimes that's called buying in bulk. Bulk, tr a tricky word to bulk. say as well. Bulk. And bulk means in large quantities. So if you buy bulk <coughs> packs of things, usually they're cheaper. So, for example, toilet rolls, for example, the paper that you use, toilet paper. Sometimes you could, usually it comes, I think, in packs of six or something. Yeah, six toilet rolls in a small pack. But then occasionally they sell bulk packs and you get, I don't know, 30 toilet rolls. You know, you need two people to carry it home. Right? <laughs> but it's very, very cheap. OK, so they are bulk, bulk packs, mm -hmm. bulk packs, bulk packs. Mm -hmm. Miriam's asking how to say de Manathion de mm. in goods. I I'm not that, sure, Miriam, but, but I Juan know. Ignacio, I think, is what is it? Is, is, is <laughs> well, Juan right? Juan Ignacio is right as well. And sometimes it's translated as denomination of origin. It's, it's translated exactly like the Spanish denomination of origin. But appellation of origin is another translation of it. Uh -huh. And that's actually something very Spanish, <clears throat> I think, um, because the Denominación de Origen in Spain, it's a whole sort of like uh, organization and yeah. it guarantees um, consistency of products. So when products are really from a protected area um, because they are craft or whatever, then they, they can... When you produce that product, you're allowed to sell it with that license that you have denominación de origin or denomination of origin. Now, we know that in Britain because, of course, we buy a lot of Spanish products, especially wine and things. So that's olive why we know is another one. olive oil Ham. is another one. Uh -huh. Come on. But it, it, it is a European concept. I'm sure that in South America too, because it's a very popular marketing concept now, because people do want to buy goods that are really, or produce that really comes from where it says it comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last yeah. Christmas, I was in the north of Italy in a place called Modena, and they yeah. have their protected domination uh -huh. of origin for origin. their uh, wine vinegar, which yes. is wonderful. It's really, uh -huh. really good. But the real stuff comes mm -hmm. from there and you can buy imitation but it's not it's not the real thing and they're very very protective of their of brand uh -huh. obviously of, of their name Chris, of their product mm -hmm. christine um uh, noticed an expression i used earlier that's the way the cookie crumbles with a u christine not an a crumbles and she said she used it some days ago an english teacher told me it was an american english well she's right or he's right um that cookie is an American word for biscuit. Mm -hmm. However, that the whole expression, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I don't know if you agree, Lynn, is we use that in the UK. Yeah, I've, I've heard it in the UK. Quite commonly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not a particularly American expression. No. Mm -hmm. And it means um, las cosas son así. That's the way things mm -hmm. happen. That's the way it goes. That's, that's I, I would normally say that's the way it goes. Yep. Or you can say that's life. <laughs> Okay. That's life, kid. Anyway, life. to be in stock, uh, stock is the um, amount of product you have in the store, in the shop, or in the warehouse. Warehouse is almathen. So have you ever been to a shop to buy a pair of shoes or anything, and they say, oh, I'm so es que no tenemos. We all Está have, ag Craig. Agotado. Uh, but, Craig, we all have, because with the COVID pandemic, I think Order in rolls. all countries, exactly, when we knew that there was going to be a lockdown, everybody, there was panic buying in the shops. And in many shops, especially in Britain, 
but also in Spain and in Germany and many places, then suddenly the toilet rolls were out of stock. Had never happened before. But, <laughs> but it but it was interesting. You bring before, on the COVID and then everybody buys toilet rolls. <laughs> when you were when you were speaking about bulk buying, your example was toilet rolls. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's what you will always need. <laughs> very important. That's what happened. Um, that's what happened in in March and April. Many items like toilet rolls were out of stock. Agotado. If something's out of stock, they don't have it. If it's in stock, they have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have two last ones, the sell by date and the best before date. And these are two dates that are often printed on the packaging of food or drink, right? And there's, it's a date. Now the sell by date means that the supermarket is not allowed to sell the product after that date because it is assumed that the product is no longer fresh or, or it could be dangerous, right? So they usually cannot sell the produce after the sell-by date, right? And then we have another date, which is in English is called the best before date. And that doesn't mean exactly the same as the sell-by date because the best before date means you should consume this uh, product before this date but if you consume it a little bit afterwards it doesn't mean it's going to kill you right but you can consume it later but it won't be <laughs> as nice <laughs> but you are allowed to eat it right it be, but yeah. a sell by date you should not eat or drink anything that is past its sell by date because it could be dangerous uh -huh. possibly with fish for example things like that mm -hmm. okay whoops okay Sorry, I'm having problems with my banners. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's some vocabulary that that we hope that that's helped you a little bit with supermarket vocabulary. But the the question I'd like to ask is, I've got a list of products here, and I'd like you to think of your supermarket. Now, maybe your supermarket has two entrances, but there probably is a main entrance. There probably is a big door, the main entrance where you enter. Your super, your local supermarket. So I'd like us to think for a second about where the products would be and why. So where would these? Where would you expect to find these products and why? And that's because my local supermarket has recently changed everything around, and I'm wondering why they they did it. So the first one, fruit and vegetables. Lynn, where are the fruit and vegetables? In, in your local supermarket. supermarket. Yeah. I think in all the supermarkets that I go to, the fruit and vegetables are very close to the entrance. Mine too. Why do you think that is? Well, you might know because you worked in a supermarket. Do you have any idea why? Yeah, I don't know because, I mean, it was years ago before they used to do positioning when I worked in a supermarket. But I assume it's because people, usually with fruit and vegetables, it's the kind of thing that you cannot you, you go regularly to the supermarket to buy because, of course, fruit and vegetables doesn't last very long, right? And I think it's the most attractive and colourful things. So they put them at the front of the shop to try to attract people into the shop because if you see a beautiful display of apples with lovely colours and grapes and bananas, and they usually do very, very nice sort of arrangements of the fruit and the vegetables. Mm. And so, and, and I think also because people buy that regularly, some people go every couple of days in order to get fruit or vegetables from the supermarket. There's usually lots of people buying there. And I think it gives the impression that the supermarket is attractive. I, I agree. That, that would be my. That would be my. I think it, no, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred percent. And people are agreeing with you that it's it's close to the entrance, as as mm -hmm. Dean said, and Claudia too. I think it's got a lot to do with what you mentioned before about markets as well. It gives you the mm -hmm. sense that you're entering an outdoor market yes. with the uh -huh. colours and the smell of the oranges and the fruit. Uh -huh. um, yeah, absolutely. And it gives uh, that idea that this is a place where you can buy fresh produce 
uh, which is of course not true in a supermarket but because <laughs> everything is canned or frozen or yeah but it gives that impression that you're buying something fresh and lovely uh -huh. christine has said it's a way to pique your interest that's yeah. a nice As expression. Has said, it's like opening your desire, but pique your interest is very English. Well done, Christine. Yeah, a nice lovely, expression. A expression. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is alcohol. Where's the alcohol? Ah. <laughs> and why? You're asking me. <laughs> well, well, I don't might, drink the alcohol. Supermarket. Well, I do, and the alcohol in all the supermarkets I know, well, it's usually at the back at the, the back of the store. Yeah. Hmm. Although some of them in Spain have a small selection of alcohol near the cash desks in a sort of like a in a in a glass case that they lock near, near the near the checkout. Near the checkouts. But the the big range where you can choose lots of different see different types of wine or spirits or whatever, usually that's at the back of the store. Mm -hmm. I I find I don't know why. Uh, I have no idea about that. The only thing that I could think of of it being near the the checkout when you're leaving is that you buy yourself a reward for doing the shopping. If you're an adult, you might buy a few beers or a bottle of wine as a reward to yourself for doing the task of the shopping. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never Possibly, thought of it like that. No, I, I'd buy maybe. a bottle as a reward for the. Uh... <laughs> The bottle of wine, no. It's just on my list. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your list. It's number one it's on the on list. list. It's just on my list. Uh -huh. Sweets and chocolates, we can say confectionery covers sweets and chocolates for the kids and everything is called confectionery in English. Where's mm. that in your well, supermarket? We talked about that before. Or would you like the students to answer? Well, it might be that... Well, both. I mean, if the <laughs> students have a comment and, and what do you think? I've got my own theory. Well, of course, we talked about it earlier. It's always at the cash desks. And it's because I think, you see, unlike alcohol, I think chocolate is more of an impulse buy. You see chocolate. It's not something that you need. Like it's not if you're hungry at lunchtime, you don't need chocolate. You need a meal. Chocolate is a, on confectionaries and sweets. It's a special treat you know and i think and it's an impulse buy and i think and that's why i think they have it at the the cash desk they always definitely have it at the cash desk because of the children because the children have to go all the way around the supermarket and they are really bored and they're grouchy and they're not happy and then there's a queue at the cash desk and then they're saying mommy 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 and then suddenly of course they see the sweets and mm -hmm. then they say i want the sweets i want the sweets and the poor mothers and I know this because it's happened to me, yeah? <laughs> the kids get more and more excited and you're saying, no, 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 no. And they're going, yes, 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 yes. And then you have people in the queue looking at you thinking, oh, she's not a nice mother. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you feel the pressure from everywhere to say, okay, come on, let's just buy it. So they'll shut up. Yeah, so, and as you and as you said before, the level is also important. So for okay. younger children, the uh -huh. young children's sweets would be more at the bottom at their eye level, and maybe the boxes of chocolates and the darker chocolates, the more serious uh, sugary confectionery. Chewing gum, which is not really a children's thing, not a small children's thing. The chewing gum is always a little bit higher up as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, you use the expression to buy on impulse, and Christine said on a whim, which is very similar. Yeah, to buy something on impulse or to buy it oh, on, on a whim. whim. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. I'll ask next you one. this time. Well, chewing you said chewing. Batteries, but where at are the they? At the checkout, because yeah. it's something that's not usually on your list. And uh -huh. as you're waiting in line, you think, oh, I need some batteries for my electric shaver. And uh -huh. you buy the batteries uh, because they're so, an item that you don't tend to associate with a supermarket. And as you said, chewing gum, um, maybe for the kids or maybe for the adults, mm -hmm. that it's not expensive and you might just take one mm -hmm. as a reward for doing the shopping or because you forgot to put it on the list. Yeah. I think batteries is a bit curious, though, you know, because you don't buy batteries that often. 
I mean, batteries could be with the detergents, couldn't it, really? I mean, it's certainly not an impulse buy. I don't say, oh, I fancy a battery today <laughs> as a reward. <laughs> I me a battery. <laughs> I suppose whatever turns you on. <laughs> but, yeah. But, oh, another thing you were saying about increasing sales at eye level, I think. Does it also increase the sales when they're at the end of the aisle? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because the, uh, the end of the aisle is where people are deciding where to go. What to buy so next. So often at the end of the aisle, they are very special positions and they are for the special offers, for example, or they are for uh, discounts, special offers, and it's supposed to persuade you to buy that, not even to go to the place where the other items are, but you have that one because it's on special offer. Uh, and those promotions are usually paid for, not by the supermarket, but by, by the, the manufacturers. Uh -huh. yeah. And they pay for those positions. The aisles are very, very important positions because it's where milk. the people meet. Uh -huh. Bread and milk. Yeah. Uh huh. Bread and milk. Where is the bread and milk, <laughs> Craig? Sorry. Well, <laughs> to ask you, where is very, the bread and milk? very rarely together, because they're two of the most basic items that you don't tend to do on a monthly or a weekly shop. You might go two or three times or more in a week to get your bread and to get your milk. And usually in supermarkets, there are opposite ends of the supermarket, which I means you have a to cross. Uh, it's All probably a the triangle with the fruit and vegetables because they're the things that you buy really regularly. The fresh food, uh, yeah. And they yeah. want you to travel all the way around the supermarket. All the way around the supermarket. Yeah. So you don't usually find them together. And mm. a lot of supermarkets have bakeries in the supermarket mainly because of the smell because they don't mm. really need to bake the bread there. But like the fruit, giving the colors and the impression of an open market, it's a wonderful smell to walk into a supermarket and smell fresh bread. So lots of them bake bread there because of the smell, not because it's economically um, good for them. Mm -hmm. Christine yeah. said, oh, Edgar had a good reason. He said the reason the batteries are at the, um, at the checkouts is because they're mostly locked, which is mm. true. Uh, that's true because they're quite expensive, so they they tend to lock them. Yeah. And Christine says they've been replaced by face masks. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite sad, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not um, for long. We hope not for long. Not for long. There's a vaccine on the way. That will be in the supermarket soon. A vaccine. Yeah. The, vac <laughs> the face mask soon will be three for five or five for five, five for two. Please buy them. We don't want them special anymore. offer. Free face mask with every battery. Exactly. <laughs> Fresh meat. Where's that in your supermarket? Is it at the back of it's the? At the back. Uh, it's yeah. at the back usually. Uh, so they can bring I, it in from outside maybe. Possibly. And I also think that the fresh meat counter is actually one of the less attractive counters. I mean, we like meat. I mean, people like meat, although of course there are vegetarians and vegans who are really, they really don't like meat and they find the sight of the meat counter quite disturbing. And I think even people who eat meat often find the sight of the meat counter disturbing i know when i worked in a supermarket i was praying every week please don't put me on the meat counter please don't put me on the meat counter because <laughs> i was I that... terrified of having to touch the the meat i really did not want to do that and i was very fortunate in the two years i worked there they never put me on the meat counter so i think that's uh -huh. possibly more true in the uk than here in spain i think in spain yeah. people prefer to see the cut of the meat where it comes from uh -huh. and the same with fish and i think in the uk the shoppers tend to prefer everything pre-packaged in plastic mm. yeah. and my mum hated to see the eyes on the fish oh yeah she hated uh, to see that and she liked to buy her meat and her fish in uh -huh. little packets yeah. and not mm -hmm. see the animal she didn't like yes. to see the animal where it came from in spain uh -huh. i think they prefer to see the animal to know yes. it's a good a good piece of meat yes and claudia says they have a butcher meat is not packaged like in the united states i think the yes. united states is even further <laughs> than uk in that because we do also have butchers in the uk of course 
but I think in the United States, nearly everything is prepackaged. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, dairy is the last one. The last one, dairy. Next, That's my favourite. Uh, That's my favourite. Because you love cheese. Yeah. Oh, I love cheese. Yes. So dairy, what, milk, milk, and what, cheese. What's your favourite cheese? Oh, I haven't got a favourite one. No. I love all cheeses, all of them. I just, I can't get enough. Uh -huh. So I love all the English cheeses. I love French cheeses. I love Spanish cheeses too. Swiss cheeses, all sorts of cheeses. <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> and so, yeah, dairy. But dairy is usually now in supermarkets, most of the dairy section is actually all fridges. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there's a massive amount of fridges and they're full of things like yogurts and butter and spreads and uh, anything that needs anything that's got milk in it is called dairy okay mm -hmm. francisco agrees with me well done francisco we're compatriots in cheese and claudia too <laughs> great my my favorite's idia thabal from from pais basco from the north i love mm -hmm. idia thabal cheese the smoky uh, strong cheese yeah mm -hmm. that's my favorite well, yeah. I think we we should stop there. It's um it's been an hour, so uh -huh. I think we'll um we'll, we'll stop it there. Unless you want to add anything, Lynn? No, oh, but I want to know finally why mm -hmm. did your supermarket change the position of everything, Craig? Well, I'll I'll tell you next time because they still haven't finished, and oh. obviously they're changing it for like the Christmas shoppers. But um, there must be a reason why they've changed the position of everything. So based on what we've said today, I will go in next week and I will have a look and see if things have changed depending on what we think with the fruit and vegetables, the the milk, the dairy, the milk and the bread being separate, mm -hmm. um, the alcohol being at the exit, that kind of thing. And I'll see if anything's changed. But it's really, really annoying because now I don't know where anything is. No, I, know. I hate it. I hate but it when they... Luckily, I don't usually do the shopping, so it doesn't really matter <laughs> that much anyway. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> it's, it's not one of my household tasks, so I don't do the shopping. All right, then. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining in today. We've had lots of comments about things. That's lovely. And um, and we hope to see you next week. Well, I won't be here next week, but Monica will be. Yeah. And we've got a surprise coming up the week after that. So um, keep 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 looking at Facebook. Keep keep watching Twitter at Mansion mm -hmm. Twit, and we'll let you know what's coming in the next two weeks. Lynn, why don't you mention your website before we before okay, we say goodbye? So I, my company is called Put It Like This, and my website is at putitlikethis.com. And um, I offer online teaching services to people who have objectives, things that they want to achieve in English. So it could be teachers, for example, who want to improve their pronunciation because they're teaching in English. Or it could be people who want to pass Cambridge exams or other types of exams. So they have a specific objective. I also teach business English to business people who, have, um, who need to make presentations or they need to make meetings. So basically, the, the, the crux of it is if you have an objective, then you explain the objective and then I help you put it like the way you want to. So to uh, help you achieve your goal in English. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and I'm from mansionengles.com where we have material to help you improve your English. We've got lots of free material and some paid courses also. And if you don't know about the podcast, it's every week at englespodcast.com and everywhere you like to listen to your podcasts. Uh, before we go, just a one or two comments that are coming in just want to say hello to eva who hates cheese but she lives near oh you're so lucky oh how can you not like cheese uh, oh ever i don't know and um josh said can, can i make a video i would love to be able to have the free time to to make a video on christmas shopping Joss, videos are lovely but they take so much time to plan to film to edit and to publish that it is only a question of time and hopefully next year I'll be able to do more video content. I do have mm -hmm. plans, but it's just, uh, I cannot at the moment because I just don't have enough time. Um, 
thanks for watching, everyone. Mm -hmm. It's been Thank a lot you. of fun. And Lynn will be back in, in two weeks, and I'll be back mm -hmm. again next Wednesday with Monica. In the meantime, stay safe. And next time you go to your supermarket, have a look and see if you've agree, you agree with what we've said today about where things are and why. So, and please try to remember all the vocabulary <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> when you're in the aisle and you're getting your receipt. What was that word again? Uh -huh. And you're reaching up for the chocolate on the top shelf. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Take care, okay. everyone. Stay Take safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.